I get my power bill, and once again there's a huge message imploring me to get their free light bulbs. I know they're not actually free. They just charge me more for electricity to pay for the free. I know that they do this because if they can get people to save energy, then they build fewer power plants. I'm very much in favor of less power plants, less pollution, and most of all, more money in my pocket. But when I run the math for myself, I see that switching to CFLs might save me $4 per year in electricity, but if they sent me a $5 clothesline, that would save me about $75 per year. Something ain't right. My friend volunteered for an energy audit. The result was, you should use more weather stripping. And then the auditor replaced a dozen light bulbs in the house with free CFLs. These light bulbs were mostly in closets and hallways. I said to my friend, I thought if the CFLs are used someplace where the lights are not on very long, they wear out really fast. I've never seen that on the box. Plus, the auditor put them in the hallways, so they must be okay. I spent hours on Google trying to find something that would tell me how much shorter the bulb life would be if used for only short periods of time. The information I found was a Mythbusters episode where they cycled a bunch of bulbs for two minutes on and two minutes off. After six weeks, the CFLs and the incandescents were all dead. So CFLs that were rated at 10,000 hours were dead before they reached 504 hours. I wanted more information. I set up four CFLs, a standard incandescent, a long life incandescent, and an LED on a cyclic timer that would be on for 30 seconds and off for two minutes. I chose 30 seconds because I think there are lots of situations in a house where you need 30 seconds or less of light. seconds. Twelve seconds. Thirteen seconds. Five seconds. Eight seconds. Nineteen seconds. Twenty eight seconds. Twenty four seconds. Twenty eight seconds. Eighteen seconds. Nine seconds. Twenty seven seconds. Twenty eight seconds. Thirty four seconds. Let the experiment begin! The first light died on day 15. Its box said that it would last 12,000 hours, but its total on time was 72 hours, so it lasted less than 1% of the time that was reported on the box. My favorite parts are the pictures of the trees and the claim that buying this two-pack will save $74. Another CFL died on day 20, and another on day 26. Both incandescent lights and the LED are still going strong. On day 42 is when the Mythbusters stopped their test. For them, all of the lights were dead except the LED, so I expected the last CFL and the regular incandescent to die any day. I'll keep recording this experiment and report the results later. 
Here is another experiment I did. I mounted a light meter in a fixed position from a light socket. I then videoed four lights for their first 30 seconds. The top left light is a 40 watt incandescent. The other three lights are CFLs with boxes claiming to be 40 watt equivalent. In the first second you can see the phenomenon that many people experience when you turn the light switch on but it takes a moment for the CFL to give off light. Notice how the CFLs start off with about 70 percent less light than the incandescent. It will take a few minutes to get close to the full brightness of the incandescent. At 16 seconds the average lumens is half that of the incandescent. So for any light in the house that averages less than 30 seconds of use, you need a CFL that is twice as powerful as labeled to give off almost the same light as an incandescent. A study by the International Association for Energy Efficient Lighting reported that it takes 1.8 kilowatt hours of electricity to assemble a CFL compared to 0 0.11 kilowatt hours to assemble an incandescent. But what about the cost of all those extra parts, the extra glass, the chemicals, and the shipping of a heavier bulb and all that? Well, that's going to be reflected in the price, right? A few years ago, the price of a light bulb in Australia was pretty much the same. And then the incandescent was banned. As time passed, the price of the CFL went up. This is because the CFL was subsidized. But when the incandescent was no longer a choice, there was no reason to subsidize anymore. I expect that the price will level off around $12 per light. We'll see what happens. We have subsidies too. I mean, more than the power companies. Our government subsidizes CFLs just like Australia did. So you might get them for free, but the government and the power company will get that money out of you in another way. The amount of energy embodied in a mass-produced object is usually pretty close to the unsubsidized price. So, for my experiment where the first CFL died at 72 hours, that bulb cost me about $3. It used about 7 cents of energy during its short life. The incandescent used 28 cents worth of energy during the same time. If you're okay with this total energy idea, then the CFL used four times more energy than the incandescent. If we factor in the subsidy, the CFL used 15 times more energy than the incandescent. I have one last point to make about the cost of CFLs, and it has three parts. Part one is from Wikipedia and talks about people in CFL factories being hospitalized for mercury poisoning. Not just one or two, but hundreds. In one factory, nearly all of the employees have been poisoned. Part 2 is about a 2008 data sheet from the EPA that makes the case that for 8,000 hours of light, a CFL causes 1.2 milligrams of mercury pollution via power plants, and the incandescent causes 5.8. And then, the single CFL pollutes only 0 0.6 milligrams of mercury from the bulb itself. I think the first thing this chart shows is how important it is to clean up our power grid. Of course, more efficient heating or using a clothesline would be thousands of times cleaner than this light bulb stuff, but that's another story for another day. First, let me fix a little math problem. A CFL claims to use four times less energy, so this should be 4.8, not 5.8. Next, the report accidentally focused only on just a limited type of mercury pollution from the CFL. When you include all of it, it works out to an average of 4 milligrams. So the CFL does cause more mercury pollution than the incandescent. Of course, here is what the chart looks like for using clean energy. And here is the chart for when you factor in the light bulbs like the one that died on me after 72 hours of use. Part 3 is about the effects of a properly functioning CFL. They saved the 
things are saving you money in the long run there's just the health cost my final point is that CFLs are toxic during their manufacture toxic during their use and toxic after their disposal I spend about eight dollars per year on electricity for lights all of my lights are incandescent when used in places where the lights are not on very long I think incandescent lights cost much less. When used in places where the lights are left on a long time, I think the margin is narrower, but the incandescent is still cheaper. Besides, I like the quality of light better from the incandescent, and I think they are better for the environment. Seconds. Where's your clipboard? I, how am I supposed to pee, pull my pants up, and have okay. my clipboard all at once? Maybe leave your clipboard here. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Or more. Every time they're taking tests under them. And I need air. Okay. <laughs> all right. Ha <laughs> ha 